Hampshire Republican presidential candidate, Texas Congressman Ron Paul. Ron, thanks for being with congratulations. us. Congratulations. Congratulations on a very strong showing. I, I was saying earlier that I thought your showing here, uh, same with Iowa, was not just about you, but it was about a large chunk of the Republican Party that's been disillusioned with 10 years of big government republicanism. Do you agree with that? Well, I, I, I think you're right, and I think that is very healthy, and I point this out all the time, is uh, why, why do we allow the big government conservatives to dictate policy in the Republican Party? Uh, you know, I'm sure you weren't in favor of no child left behind and prescription drug programs, and, you know, once we get in charge, we just acted like Democrats, and there's a large segment of the Republican Party very frustrated with that and think we ought to be conservatives. And so what's your message going forward to South Carolina? Because you've got a lot of establishment candidates that you're running against that are claiming to be the conservative alternatives that, one, supported that $7 trillion Medicare drug benefit plan without paying for it, two, supported no child left behind, and three, are now attacking Mitt Romney for engaging in acts of capitalism. <laughs> Oh, I, I tell you, all I can do is do my best in speaking out uh, at the rallies and, uh, and, and, and sending that message out, which we will continue to do. And I feel good that the momentum is building. It used to be hard, you know, to get the message out. But the uh, fundraising is actually getting easier. It's always been pretty good for us to raise money because people do get enthusiastic. It comes from the small uh, donors. But I think that's a, a powerful message. I thought they made a serious mistake yesterday on the other candidates. You know, I'm very critical of uh, Governor Romney for some of his positions because he's not a small government person, but to attack him for, uh, you know, falling through on a procedure which is real market-oriented to restructure corporations, that's a positive thing in economics. So I just wonder whether they're totally ignorant of, uh, uh, of economics or whether they're willing to demagogue just with the hopes of getting a vote or two. So, uh, yeah, that didn't make a whole lot of sense there, for what they were doing right. in the last couple of days. Congressman, let me tag off of something you just said. Let's talk about the front runner, clear now, Mitt Romney. Is he a big government conservative, or how would you characterize him? I would think so. I mean, if you go by his record, he uh, certainly couldn't be governor of Massachusetts and, and really be a, a strict conservative. And, and, you know, I think that's been rehashed quite a few times on the positions he held as governor and the positions he holds now. So, uh, and he may well have changed the position, but it raises these questions. How many times do the Republicans get stung? And the last thing we need is anybody who is sympathetic maybe for uh, TARP fund uh, uh, bailouts and uh, uh, single uh, mandates. Uh, uh, that, I think, I think will get uh, demolished in, in, in a general election if we're tainted with that, because if, once again, like Joe says, the Republican, there's a large base in, uh, in the Republican Party are saying, you know, we, we've been stung too many times uh, with people who aren't convincingly enough uh, good conservatives. Congressman, it's Willie Geis. Congratulations on a good night last night. Uh, you are up now above 20%. You. you did it in Iowa. You've done it now in New Hampshire. And yet you're talked about often with the caveat, well, yeah, he's got a strong following. People really believe in him. They're excited about him. Oh, but he can't win. Is there something about this year, is there something about this time around that makes you believe that this year could be different, that you actually could raise somewhere above that 25% threshold where you are? Yeah. Well, I think the facts uh, uh, disclaim that because, you know, that's exactly what they said when I was single digits. He's reached his peak. There's only about 9% or 8% of the American people who really care about the liberty that Ron Paul's talking about. Now we're at 20 to 25%. So I would say, you know, the evidence is there. But the other thing is the country has changed. This is uh, uh, traveling around and talking to people. They are frightened about the economy. In spite of the fact that there's still a lot of wealth in this country, they realize it's all based on debt. And they know it's very, very unsteady. And also, they're just tired of these debt. Deficits. They're tired of the wars going on. They're tired of the president going, starting new wars and sending more troops around. I mean, we're adding country. Today, he announced that he was going into another country in Africa and sending more troops. So this is what uh, the people are sick and tired of. And uh, I, I think that this is why the message of liberty and sound financing and uh, the message I've been talking about is going to continue to grow. Mark Halperin. Dr. Paul, congratulations on your showing here. I want to ask you 
about the Liberty Thank Agenda you. and head and Head Start. Is that a program you think is constitutional, or would you support it, continuing it, if you were elected president? No, it's not constitutional, but I wouldn't put that on list. You know, if uh, if we want a perfectly free society, you can't wave a wand and get everything you want. So you have to work our way out of this. You know, Social Security and uh, these other programs are unconstitutional, but I'm only the, I, I believe I'm the only one that has a program that would protect us uh, so that we can work our way out of it and hopefully, uh, you, you know, take care of these programs. But Head Start, you know, uh, some conservatives would say, yeah, let's cut Head Start and say we're cutting something. Uh, no, we have to cut the big things, cut five departments, cut, cut uh, some of this occupation overseas and these senseless wars, and then try to work our way out and take care of people who become so dependent. Uh, the, the Federal Reserve is unconstitutional, but my position isn't to close it down in one day. My position is to give it competition and expose it for what it is and audit the Fed and work out a better monetary system. So I think those, you, uh, that's a much more though, reasonable you, approach than to say, pardon me? But if you had your way, you'd eliminate Head Start. Well, you know, you're just putting words in my mouth. I don't know what your goal is. I just explained myself very clearly. Technically, it's unconstitutionally. Ultimately, if we want to be strict constitutionalists and we have support of the people and we want to move in that direction and prove that a Head Start program could be privatized or localized, Yes, that's the case. But to, to make everything I'm saying that, oh, Ron Paul's out to stop Head Start, you're missing my whole point. I mean, you're, it's a total distraction on what you're talking about. Uh, uh, all right, Ron, I want to thank you for being with us. Congratulations on the Thanks strong showing the last show. night. And when you come back next time, I would love to talk about what the Congress can do over the next year to make sure we don't add another trillion dollars in debt like we did in 2011. I don't think that's why a lot of conservatives voted for their conservative members uh, back in the 2010 elections. Yeah, Joe, what they need is a backbone. That's what they need, and they need to wake up, and the people need to wake up to Congress so they, so they act more properly. Thank you for being on the show this morning. Conservatives in Congress do need a backbone. Thank you so much, Ron. We greatly appreciate it. Still ahead uh, this morning from Manchester, New Hampshire, Chris Matthews is going to be on the